Hey, welcome to this Geography Masterclass. Today we're going to learn about managing coastal landscapes. My name is Mr. Salagaris. This is part of my Year 8 Geography course. So, there are forces of nature such as erosional and depositional water movements, um, ones that erode and deposit sand, and other environmental factors which heavily impact on coastal landscapes. This includes the communities that live there, so they're affected by these forces. Management um, of these forces is designed to minimize the impact of these forces, particularly that of longshore drift. If you don't know what longshore drift is, go back to one of my previous videos and you'll um, find out what that is there. So some of the impacts of these forces is damage to the built environment, so roads and houses, but it can also change the natural environment by eroding or depositing sand. So erosional refers to the movement of sand away from a site, a coastal landscape. Um, that can be very damaging, but also depositional is the movement of sand to a site. So that um, is influenced by the process of longshore drift. We're going to talk about the impacts of these two and how they can be managed. Okay. So the management processes that can be in place to minimize the impact of longshore drift are things like sea walls, which are made up of rocks, concrete blocks, and sandbags. There's also things called groins, which are walls that jut out from the beach into the sea. There's training walls, and there are things called beach nourishment or replenishment projects, which transport sand from a site where sand's been deposited to a place where it's been eroded to make that sand, uh, the sand of that coastal landscape be built back up again. So um, what I've done is drawn a couple of pictures of those, and we can, we can talk about those right now so here we got groins in this image here this one here groins are like uh, sometimes they build out of wood sometimes rocks that jut out from the sand uh, into the water a little bit with the process of longshore drift moving sand from this way to this side here um, sand has been picked up moved out then brought across picked up moved up brought across and the idea of the groins is to stop or minimize that movement of sand along the beach. So it builds up at points like this here along the groins. Okay, um, that's a really important one to understand. Training walls, they're used along channels. So boating channels um, to make sure that sand doesn't build up in here and that it's deep enough for, um, deep enough for ships and vessels to travel out of it. You can see with the blue lines, the dark blue here, they represent the waves. Um, with the process of longshore drift, this interrupts that pattern of the sand being moved across and it will be deposited at spots like this here. Okay, this is that beach replenishment that I was talking to you about. So as longshore drift moves sand from this side here of the beach up that way, um, what happens is that people can collect that sand in big trucks and ship it all the way back down to this side here of the beach and then replenish the stocks of sand down here that have been eroded and, and moved up as a result of longshore drift. Um, things like that happen quite a lot in Adelaide, maybe not so much here in Queensland, but it's an important thing to still understand. Let's talk about the management of erosional forces on the beach. There are two main types of management strategies which people put in place. Uh, one is break walls and the other is sea walls. A break wall, well the difference between the two is that a break wall goes out into the sea, whereas a sea wall, uh, sea wall is built close to the coast. It's like a tongue twister. So this is the sea wall here, uh, sorry, break wall, goes out into the sea. This interrupts that pattern of longshore drift across. So you can see how the waves, if it's moving across this way here, don't have much of an impact on this side. So it means that this side here is protected from that erosional force of the waves. On this one here, we've got a sea wall. This is something that you can see if you're driving down the Esplanade of Harvey Bay. Along the beachfront, they will bank, um, bank rocks, which um, stop the waves, uh, stop the backwash and the swash of waves taking sand and moving it um, back out to sea. So it also stops the erosion um, of the seafront. 
Often you'll find seawalls along the sides of roads um, and housing development on land, uh, sorry, on, on coastal landscapes. So they're a really effective way to stop sand being moved or eroded from coastal landscapes. Okay, well, let's talk about the human impacts on the natural environment. Um, so travel and movement of ships is a pretty important thing for countries, particularly Australia. So um, for large ships and that to move through coastal regions, um, they need to be able to travel through a deep enough channel. So the process of longshore drift and erosion and deposition um, can often mean that sand gets built up in these channels where these ships want to pass through. So there's a process called dredging which pumps sand from those areas um, and then it is um, transported to um, sites where sand can be replenished. Um, that's to allow those ships to move in and out. Some of the other impacts that, that can have um, are changing the natural environment and the flow of water through particular areas. Other things that impact are litter and pollution. So people dropping their waste, um, especially in sand dunes, in riverways, and that sort of thing can have a real impact on the natural environment. Uh, what's called ghost nets. So when a ship or something breaks their net off in the water, um, those nets can become tangled or they can just drift around the ocean and, and the currents of the ocean mean that these nets are usually meet up and, and travel along a current path. Um, they can be particularly dangerous um, and impacting on the natural environment. Also, humans can impact the natural plant life um, of a sand dune and a beach. So the plant life at a beach holds the sand together. Without that, it causes large amounts of erosion to occur. So that's why here in Harvey Bay along the beach we've got trees and a lot of vegetation planted to stop that erosional process. Who looks after that? Organisations such as the government, land care, schools, um, etc. care for and manage coastal environments at different levels. So the government organises the big projects whereas things like schools and land care uh, do the smaller projects and the maintenance of the, that. Hey, let's summarize the main points. Um, there are a whole range of different strategies which can be put in place to minimize the impacts of erosional and depositional forces on coastal environments. Humans can impact coastal environments pretty significantly and um, they're probably the main points that you need to know for this one here. Hey, make sure you go back and watch it again. If there's something that you missed, make sure you like it and subscribe to my channel. Hey, thanks for watching.